Why do you study English? What is your final aim? We study English grammar, we improve our English vocabulary, and we spend hours on practicing them. All for one reason. We want to be able to speak English fluently and without hesitation, right? But how can you do that? Let me tell you all you need to do in order to be able to speak English fluently. If you want to improve your English speaking skill, you need to do one thing only, and that is practice. Sounds simple, right? Let me tell you one thing. Imagine you want to learn how to drive a car. So you buy a driver's manual, you start reading about all the rules, all the signs. In theory, you'll learn how to drive a car. But after finishing it in theory, will you be a good driver? No. Why? Because you have never touched a car. You need to get behind the wheel and start practicing. You need practice and practice and practice. Even though your theoretical knowledge is very good, your practical knowledge is not enough. It's the same with speaking. No matter how much time you spend on reading grammar, on practicing vocabulary, on learning new English words, on watching YouTube videos, you will never be a good speaker of English. You will never speak English fluently unless you practice speaking. The more you drive a car, the better driver and the more experienced driver you will be, right? The same goes for speaking. The more you speak, the better speaker you will be. However, there is a very big question. How should I practice speaking in English? Many students think that in order to be able to practice English speaking, you need to have an English speaking partner. Well, that is not wrong. But let me tell you something else. There are two main ways of practicing your English speaking skill. One of them is practicing with a speaking partner. If you have a friend who is also trying to improve his or her speaking skill in English, you can do it together. But be careful. I have seen many students typing under the videos in the comment section looking for a person to chat with. Chatting, texting is not speaking, it's writing. What I mean by speaking practice is not practicing over the phone, texting each other. No, you need to talk to each other, whether over the phone, online, in an online meeting or a Zoom meeting or a webinar or face-to-face -face conversations. However, when you get together with a speaking partner, there is a big challenge. What should you talk about? The first session is easy. Well, how's the weather? It's a beautiful city, isn't it? What a delightful space. What do you do in your life? What's your job? Do you work or do you study? So you get to know each other. But what about the second practice session? The third one? What happens after 10 practice sessions? You run out of ideas to talk about. Therefore, the practice becomes a boring task of talking about irrelevant and repetitive subjects. In order for this not to happen, I am going to introduce an online tool. There is this amazing website called ESL Discussions. On this website, you can find the list of all the topics you think of with two separate groups of questions. One for student A, one for student B, and then you can ask and answer these questions. So you will never run out of ideas. However, what if I don't have a speaking partner? What if I cannot find a person to practice speaking in English with? Well, in that case, don't worry. Another way of practicing your speaking skills in English is to practice on your own at home. Many people think that it's not possible to practice speaking English alone without going to a classroom, without going to a conversation class, or without having a teacher to talk to. Well, of course, having a teacher to talk to is the best option. But it can be expensive and you cannot do it all the time. You also need to practice on your own. So how can you practice speaking on your own at home? Well, the first thing I want you to do is to talk to yourself. This might sound a bit crazy. People may think you're out of your mind, but who cares? You are practicing your English. In fact, we are always talking to ourselves in our heads quietly. And that is called thinking. 
Thinking is basically talking to ourselves, right? But what I want you to do is to do it aloud. Think aloud and in English. That's very simple. Imagine a situation. Imagine yourself in a particular situation and then talk to yourself about it. For example, let's say you have an imaginary friend over here and you want to talk to your imaginary friend telling him all about your future plans for your career, for your life, whatever you want to achieve in your life or how you see yourself in 10 years from now. Try to use the vocabulary you know which is related to the topic. Try to use the grammar you know, your knowledge of English grammar, the tenses you might need to use to talk about the future. For example, simple future, future continuous, future perfect, be going to, present continuous as future, present simple as future. So mix grammar and vocabulary, make sentences and say them aloud. Imagine you're talking to your imaginary friend. Yes, 10 years from now, I will be a great scientist. Oh, you are so pretty. Me? What job I have? Well, I pursue a promising career. Uh, you know, I had an academic career, but then I noticed there is no good money in, you know, teaching. So I gave up that career because it didn't have good career prospects. So now I am pursuing a new career. However, there is a big concern. Some students think that by doing this, you will never understand what you were doing wrong. You will never know your mistakes. But let me tell you one thing. You are learning the language, right? So it's completely natural to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, that's strange. That's weird. As an English learner, it's completely natural to make mistakes. However, when you don't have a partner or when you don't have a teacher to point out the mistakes you're making, what should you do? Ignore them. Don't worry about them. Of course you make mistakes and of course you don't want to make mistakes. But learning is a process. Give it time. Little by little, you will improve your knowledge and you will understand that these things that I have been saying so far are wrong. So don't worry. Just give it time. Another thing you can do is to record your own voice and listen to it. So as you talk to yourself, as you talk to your imaginary friend, telling him all about your plans of future, telling him how you see yourself in 10 years, record your own voice using a microphone or perhaps using your phone and then listen to what you have said. You can even make a playlist of many recordings you have had. In this way, you'll be able to listen to your own voice and listening to your own voice sounds familiar for your brain. In this way, you will push your brain into becoming more accustomed to thinking in English. So you will get used to thinking in English little by little. I said thinking in English. Well, that is a very important subject. You must be able to think in English if you want to speak fluently. You know why many language learners cannot speak fluently and they have lots of hesitations and lots of uh, mm, oh. simply because they think in their L1. What is L1? It's language one. That's your mother tongue. If you make sentences in your mother tongue and then you try to translate it in English, that will take time. And that's why you're not fluent. So what you need to do is to eliminate translation. How? By training your mind into thinking in English. How can you train your mind into thinking in English? You have to immerse yourself in English. What do I mean? In order to become a fluent English speaker, you need to create an English atmosphere. You need to be in constant contact with English. And by constant, I mean on a daily basis, every single day. Uh, but teacher, I can't study English every day. Did I say you have to study English every day? No, I said you have to be in contact with English. You don't necessarily have to open a book and start reading or practicing. No. So what can you do? Let me tell you. Number one is to listen to English podcasts. By listening to English podcasts, not only will you improve your knowledge of the world, you will also improve your listening and your brain will get used to hearing English. 
There are many podcasts available. There is BBC Six Minutes English. There is VOA podcast. You can use whichever you like. But how can you use podcasts to improve your listening? I recorded another video for that. You can click here and watch that video after this one. The second thing you can do in order to be able to think in English is to read short stories. If you are into reading, if you are interested in reading, and if you are a kind of person who enjoys reading books, I really recommend reading short stories in English. There are certain short stories which are designed for students of different levels. So it's A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Based on your own level of English, select one of these books. Start reading the stories. But let me tell you one thing about selecting the correct level. Many students think if I buy a book which is more difficult for me, I will learn more new vocabulary. But hey, the point is not to learn new words. The point is just to read and enjoy, but in English. So try to choose a book which is very easy to understand. Remember, you're doing this for pleasure and not for learning. The third thing you can do is to watch English movies or English TV series. This one is quite fun. I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. In fact, I've written an article on my website about how to learn English by watching movies and how to describe movies in English. You can click on this link here, go to that article and read it after this video. The fourth thing you can do, and this one is very important, I want all of you to do it, is to pursue your hobbies in English. What do I mean? Learning English must be fun. That is my rule as a teacher to all my students. You must learn English in a fun way. If you want to be a good speaker of English, if you want to learn English to an advanced level, you must enjoy the process. So if there is a book you're reading that you hate, if there is a course you're attending that you don't like, stop it. Do something you like in order to learn the English language. That being said, a very good approach to learning English and improving your English speaking skill is to do what you like to do in your free time, but in English. So basically, whatever hobbies you have, do them in English. For example, I love soccer. I'm a big fan of Manchester United. So instead of reading blog posts, articles, and following news of my favorite team in my mother tongue, I read articles on English websites. I read English articles. I follow the news in English. I follow the official page of Manchester United on Instagram. I do it in English. I'm a huge fan of Manchester United, so I enjoy doing this in English. I enjoy reading about Manchester United. I enjoy watching the matches, reading articles, and the latest news in English about my favorite team. Because it's my favorite team. If you like music, if you are a fan of a specific singer, what you can do is to listen to their songs, checking the lyrics of your favorite songs in English. This is very enjoyable and you will learn. If you like reading books, read books that you enjoy in English. My point is very clear. Let me put it as simply as I can. Do whatever you like to do in English. Just enjoy it. Another thing you can do in order to train your mind to thinking in English is to follow influencers who are native speakers. By influencers, I mean anyone, not necessarily teachers on the internet, but anyone. For example, I love going to the gym. Well, it might not be obvious, but I love going to the gym, or at least I love seeing people going to the gym. Anyways, there is this channel on YouTube called How to Beast. The owner is a lifestyle influencer and he goes to gym. He has an amazing physique. He's a bodybuilder and he's a confidence mentor for men. Plus, he's a native speaker. And I like that. I follow his channel. I watch his videos. He's also extremely talented in editing videos and shooting videos for YouTube. So I follow him. Even though he's not a teacher, I follow him. And guess what? This will help me improve my English, right? Try to find influencers who you like, who talk about things that you like, and follow them. Also, don't forget about English teachers on YouTube. There are many channels on YouTube of great English teachers who try to teach English. Follow them, subscribe to their channels, watch their videos. All right, we have talked a lot about different things you can do in order to improve your English speaking. 
and in order to train your mind to be able to think in English. However, there is another very important thing you need to improve, and that is your confidence. One of the main reasons why students shy away from speaking English is because they are not confident. What if I speak and I make a mistake? What if I make a fool of myself? What if other people start laughing at me because I cannot speak with a good accent? Well, of course, it doesn't matter what other people think, or it does. But hey, let me tell you how to improve your confidence. One thing you can do is to read aloud in English, but not while you are seated on a chair. Stand up, walk around the room, and read out aloud. What is a collocation? Hmm. Uh, collocation means a, a natural combination of words. It refers to the English way. No. It refers to the way English words are closely associated with each other. It doesn't matter what you're reading. It's okay as long as it's in English. By doing this, by standing up, by walking around in the room and reading out aloud, you will little by little feel more confident. Even though you're doing this alone and there is no one in the room but you, that will help improving your confidence. That is called improving your presentation skill. So basically, you stand up, you think that you're in a room full of audience, you read something out aloud, perhaps you even make eye contact with the imaginary audience you have, and in this way, gradually, you will build your confidence. Another thing you can do, if you are into it, is to speak in front of a camera. I don't mean starting a YouTube channel and then publishing your video. Maybe you feel shy. Just record the video for yourself, for your own sake, and then watch your video and see your facial expressions and maybe work on your body language a little bit. A very, very useful practice is to imagine you're talking in front of a large audience. Pick a subject, for example, I don't know, playing the guitar. And then try to explain to your audience when you decided to play the guitar, what kind of guitar you play, how often you play the guitar, who's your favorite guitar player, who is your favorite singer who plays the guitar as he sings or as she sings in a very professional way? Try to give a lecture to an imaginary audience. So, why do we need to learn collocations, huh? Why? You need to learn collocations because they will help you speak and write English in a more natural and accurate way. You see, it's very important. Yeah. It's very important to learn collocations. And finally, don't forget to improve your knowledge of English. That being grammar and vocabulary. I hate it when students say you don't need grammar to speak. Of course you need grammar to speak. Grammar and vocabulary are the basis of the English language. Without them, you cannot speak, you can't listen, you cannot understand. There is no communication if you don't improve your grammar and vocabulary. Plus, by improving your grammar and vocabulary, you will be more confident. The more you learn grammar, the more confident you are of not making simple mistakes. Speaking of simple mistakes, I'm going to put a link of an article on my website about simple mistakes in English. Make sure you read it after this video. And that's it, guys. I have tried to share whatever I know of the ways in which you can practice your English speaking skill with a partner or without a partner, how to think in English, and how to build your confidence and become more confident. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. See you soon.